This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go through the S&P for Friday morning. Uh, I want to cover the market conditions, but I have, there's, there's a couple of things that are changing with the conditions, but one very, very important level that was taken out, uh, and I want to make sure that's covered. So uh, we're going to go through this. Let's go ahead and get going. Okay, as we get started here, uh, the S&P futures right now are up uh, 450.28. Um, Amazon has announced, but uh, it, it, Apple has not yet. Uh, so I'm going to keep an eye on that and see if they change as I go through this. But uh, right now we're getting a little bit of a bump. Now, either way, I'm going to show you kind of where, it, it, whether we open up down or up, um, I wanted to sort of frame it out, what to expect. Uh, because even if the futures are positive right now and tomorrow morning, they could be down. So I just want you to have the key levels uh, ready. But first, let's just go through the market conditions. So the sentiment jumped again. We have more bulls. We've got up to 57% bulls. And the difference between the two is at 39. As I've said, as we continue to creep higher here, especially if we get over 40, it gets the risk starts to get... Um, uh, even more elevated. I would say it's already there. I switched this to negative last week. Um, and I'm leaving the overbought oversold at, at negative as well, even though this has dropped down under um, the 70 mark because there is divergence there. So we have, you know, a higher high in the price pattern on the weekly and the RSI uh, five um, is making a, uh, it has a divergence signal. So I really think it, what's taking place seems like it's increasing odds that uh, we're going to have a little bit of a consolidation pullback correction, something like that. But we'll get into that in more detail when I go through the uh, time frames. And in fact, I'm going to spend some time on the hourly because uh, I want to talk about a, uh, a pattern that's set up. Um, okay, so let's look at the daily volatility because if you notice what's taking place, we're now above the moving average. Now, because that moving average is declining, I have it at neutral. But this is the first time we've been really above that in quite some time. I guess at the beginning of June, we got above. But um, it, it's it's been trending lower. The volatility has been dropping. We're starting to see an increase in volatility. You can see the size of the bars. So we want to include um, the gap level. So this would be the length of or the size of this bar. So we've had two pretty sizable bars in a row um, out of the last in the last week uh, compared to what we've been seeing. So that's why this is starting to creep higher. If we get this line above a rising moving average, then it's going to turn to negative. Now, the one thing I'll say is that I, I would be viewing this as a correction or a consolidation back to support on the weekly because we have absolutely no signs of uh, volatility increasing on the weekly yet. That means to me that this is more of a short-term situation rather than something big developing. But if, in fact, you know, this turns into a really ugly bar or something like that, we could start to see this um, average true range on the weekly start to pop. But I think it's a premature thought process because I think we, we would need to, this to increase and then maybe on the rally. So this could turn up and then maybe on a rally we could see um, some kind of a, a flip over take place uh, um, uh, where the volatility is growing and the danger starts to uh, increase. But we're not there yet. Still have to keep this at positive. This line just keeps dropping. But as I mentioned last week, we can have a positive uh, weekly trend, an overall condition that's bullish, and have these two telling us to expect a pullback. And that's really where we are right now. Overall, generally speaking, the the, the uh, overall conditions, I think, are positive, but we have a little bit of an air pocket to pull back here. And uh, we're going to get into this, the uh, trend and the momentum right now. Uh, but before I do that, I do want to point out the changes. So the daily went from positive to neutral. Um, and that was really the only change in this section here. Now, I did not change the trend to um, neutral, be, even though we broke the 18. Um, and I'll explain that as we get into this now. Let's go ahead and look at the different time frames. First of all, uh, let's just spend a second on this monthly chart because 
this line had been, this 18 month line had been acting as resistance and then we pushed through it three or four months ago. Now I think it acts as support on a pullback. It, it really sort of helps our thesis that um, there's underlying support and a pullback is more of a um, potential buying opportunity rather than some kind of a top forming. That's at least where I am right now on this. I think this is looking like it's going to provide support. Now, at the same time, I think this has gone too far without a pullback. I mean, we are we are in a zone where we should expect some kind of a correction uh, of some sort. And when we go to the weekly chart, it becomes a lot more blatant. We're back up into this um, resistance zone. Um, we are uh, up at the uh, upper channel area. All right. Now, the good news is the momentum condition is, is positive. The volume pattern, I think, looks pretty good. Um, but a move back towards the 18-week OK, if we're looking at this as the center line of this channel somewhere in this 18 week line, I think this makes a lot of sense. So that risk is probably down on the uh, spider somewhere between 430, 435, something like that is where uh, we meet up with the uh, 18 week line because the momentum confirms and because the moment uh, the volatility is low, we should assume we should be coming to the our bias should be that we have support from the 18 week line. We don't as, so I, so I'm trying to make this crystal clear. I'm not a predictor. I don't predict banks, but I like to have a bias. I like to be thinking, okay, I'm I'm under the impression unless I don't like what I see, the sellers really show up here if it's a really violent pullback that I'm under the assumption that we're going to find support at the 18 in this prior uh, breakout area. So that's that's kind of what I'm on the lookout for and what I'm expecting. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but that's my bias right now. You always want to have a bias. Now, let's go to the key line. The one thing that happened this week that's probably more important than anything and what I've been bringing up for quite some time here is we we found support here at the beginning of June um, at the 18 day line. Then in um, late June, we found support again. Then in July, we found support again. And now look at what's happening. We're breaking that line. Now we closed below the line, and then we made a new low below the low that closed below. You see what I mean? So we closed below, and then we took out the low of that bar. To me, that's confirmation of a break of this line. So if we just did this, and then we just turn right back up, then I wouldn't consider that a break of the line. It's just a good thing to keep an eye on. See how we closed below here, but then never took out the low of that? That's not a break of the line. So that's how I do that. That's what I'm on the lookout for. Now, I the reason why I am not calling this neutral, even though we're below the 18, is because these lines are up and parallel. You see that? It, this is still rising. The moment this line starts to curl over, which wouldn't take very long, if we don't get much of a rally here in the next day or two, this is going to curl over and this is going to still be rising. I'm going to flip, I would flip this to neutral. We can't really turn it negative until we get at least the 18 declining and breaking the 40 and price below the 18. You see what I mean? So I can't really, it's jumping the gun to turn this into a negative trend, but it's also jumping the gun to actually turn it neutral because these lines are rising and we could, even though we're breaking this um, moving average, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're gonna roll over. I just wanna see this 18 roll over and then I, I would say we're, we're into neutral territory for this. Now, going into this, this reversal here and this little push to new highs wasn't confirmed by MACD, and the DI had kind of died off. But we've got pretty good reading in the ADX. It's, it, it's, all of this is pointing to a correction and not a major reversal, at least not right now. This could be the starting point of a reversal, but it doesn't... Um, it's, it's not likely that we're just going to fall off a cliff here. It should come down, bounce up. It should be a little bit more complex if it's really making an important top. I think the more likely situation is we consolidate, we work our way down, MACD comes down closer to zero, and we set up, we, we, we find support at the 18-week. That's my thesis right now. That's kind of what I'm going into this with. Um, now, let's look at what's taking place on the hourly because... When we break 
the 18 day and it, we had an official break today because it closed yesterday and then took out the low today. You see what I mean? So that's the confirmation that we've broken the 18 day. Look at what happened on the hourly at the exact same time. And if you watched um, Stock Talk today, I did this for the QQQ as well. So we had a move to the upside. And this is what I've been talking about on this. We broke this and then we came back and tested, but we never took out this low. We hadn't taken out this low until this week, right? We just we just did this over the course of the last day or two, the three, right? This was the one um, breaking breaking the trend line. Two was coming up here and testing, tested here, tested here. You know, all this is considered a test of the high. Now coming down through this is the three. Now, what I was saying on Stock Talk for the uh, QQQ is that I wanted to see a little bit more uh, because when it took out the three, it was stretched away from uh, the moving average. I expected some kind of a rally. We get confirmation on a move back down through here. So this is the point I wanted to make. Right now, the futures are showing 450 and a half. So I, again, I'm not sure if Apple has announced or not, but it really doesn't matter. If we come in tomorrow and they're up big, then we know that we haven't confirmed the low of taking this out, right? Because one, two, three, a one, two, three pattern, a one, two, three reversal is presumptive evidence of a change in trend. It is not confirmation. We need a rally and then another lower high, a, a lower high and a lower low, right? We need to confirm that after the one, two, three to really have confirmation that the trend has shifted down. And if that happens, then I think the 18 rolls over. Then I think the probability of coming down to this uh, weekly line is incredibly high. Um, all right. Now, if we end up gapping up tomorrow morning, nothing really changes here. We're still watching this low here. And the only thing that would really improve matters is if the rally is strong enough to get back above the 18 day. But just keep this in mind, even if we get back above this line and it's still rising, if we come up here and fail and then come back down and this rolls over, that's still very, very bearish. That's still a, it's still a negative pattern that's developing here. So I'm still of the opinion when I go through the market conditions, I'm looking at a, a overbought market that has divergence, that's into resistance that has very good momentum on the longer term time frame, but that the lower term time frame is starting to show signs that it's tiring out. All this is pointing to a deeper pullback. I think that's the high probability pattern that we should be on the lookout for. Um, just key on the 452 level. If we come back up, and fail at 452, then this line's gonna roll over and there's a high probability that uh, we turn back down uh, on the uh, hourly time frame, and we get a little bit more confirmation of a uh, true rollover taking place. So um, I wanted to make sure I covered all this detail. Now, if you wanted to take, so this is tough. I mean, I don't like, I knew that Apple and Amazon were going to come out with their earnings. So I don't, I wouldn't want to take this trade, this pinch play pattern, um, when I know there's some big news coming out. But it is kind of interesting because we had a pinch play on this time frame. And then if you go down to the 10 minute, we actually got a, a 10 minute uh, pinch play. So two time frame pinch play, but that's an interday trade. An interday trade, which I would not do at the end of the day. You see what I mean? Um, especially, again, when there's big news coming at the close. So um, you got to be really careful about these. These are patterns that are really very helpful. But if you know there's big news coming, you got to be very careful about taking these type of trades um, on a short-term intermediate, uh, short-term uh, interday basis. All right. Um, but we know we've got some key levels to watch. Number one on the on the S on the spider, it's around 447 and a half. And uh, then we want to watch 452.20 uh, on the upside with the 18 day. All right. Keep an eye on those. I think the probabilities are we're going to consolidate some more, even if we rally up. Uh, but, um, you know, let's just keep an eye on those key levels.